So this is the uh, water filter we've made over the last couple of days. It's very simple, it's just three buckets, one of gravel, one of sand, one of charcoal, uh, and then just a wooden frame just to hold it up. This is the water that went into it. That's the water that came out of it. If you want to wow. have a look at that. What? What? Who's the cup? We have to drink that water right now. So this and the little floaty bits kind of blew in after like the bucket was open. So the only tools as such that you need to actually make the filter itself is um, some screens. So we made these with various sized steel mesh I just got from hardware stores in town. Um, there's like the finest one I could find. Look at those. A sort of coarser one, um, a really coarse one for the gravel, and a really fine one for getting rid of the powder. Basically any kind of frame which holds your mesh in that kind of shape will do the job. It doesn't need to be made well, it just needs to be something you can hold on to and just keeps the, the mesh tight-ish. Um, and then these are all standard things, like the, these metal mesh sizes are very common in hardware stores, so you just get like a half a meter or something, cut out a square. Basically the entire process is just to get the things and then sort them by size using the screens. So the gravel is some gravel. Um, so you want to get gravel, put it through the largest screen so that you end up with sort of like that as your largest size. And then probably put it through this screen to get rid of like the dust and the sand and all the non-gravelly bits. Um, and that's pretty much the process for these as well. You want to use a screen large enough or small enough that only the small bits get through and then use a sm really small screen to get rid of the really small stuff. Because anything that's too, like anything too big won't work obviously. Um, but anything that's too small will tend to glue the system closed. So like with the sand and charcoal especially. We just got some sand just from down here, like just, just right there. Um, we put it through this screen to get like fairly fine sand, to get rid of like the, the chunks. But then it was really important to put it through the cloth screen. Where's the, where's the... Um, So, um, Daniel, do some dancing. So, if you if you just put it through the fine screen, you get like this good coarse stuff, which is what you want. But you also get really, really fine sand, and that fine sand basically turns into cement when it turns, gets wet, and so the water can't get through. Because basically, like if you imagine that's a grain of sand, and you've got other grains of sand near it, there's enough space between them that water can get through. But if you've got really tiny little bits of sand, they fill up all of those spaces, and then the water can't get through. If you've got big chunks of like, you know, almost like small rock, then the spaces are too big and too much gets water gets through and it doesn't get filtered properly. So this is about the size of sand that you want, basically, like sort of quite coarse kind of sand. But if like, I don't, I don't have any of the fine stuff that I took out, but the fine stuff is like dust. Um, and with that in it, the water just sort of didn't go through at all. Um, and then, it's, almost, it's basically exactly the same process with the charcoal, except you need to grind the charcoal first. So that mortar and pestle that we had uh, was pretty much perfect for it. You could also use like a mechanical grinder, um, like a coffee grinder, or like um, what they use for, for the vegetables here. Um, and that just looks like that. So the gravel and sand, I'm going about three quarters full bucket, but that's fairly arbitrary. This I'll probably fill up a little bit more so it's half full. Um, but again, like that's about the size that you want. So kind of a little bit even coarser than the sand. Like a little sort of like, almost like rice kind of size or half rice. Um, and so that's, yeah, charcoal. Just, just normal cooking charcoal. We just bought a bag of cooking charcoal, ground it up, 
and again just filtered out filtered it with the I think we used the like the sort of coarseish mesh and then I think you could you could use the cloth mesh but for this what I did was I just washed it through that metal mesh there so just like put it in a bucket mixed it with water and then poured out the water over this kept what this mesh kept back put that in the bucket and then the 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 black liquid basically with like the really fine charcoal which is too fine and again was gluing the whole system closed um just chucked it out uh so you're left with with that like black rice basically and that's about that's about perfect so that's that's it you basically get rid of the, the gravel that's too big get rid of the gravel that's too small get rid of the sand that's too big get rid of the sand that's too small get rid of the charcoal that's too big get rid of the charcoal that's too small bam that's it Perfect. That's it. Uh, for the buckets, uh, these buckets are actually, these are 6,000 shillings each. I reckon I can haggle the guy down to 5,000. Yeah. <laughs> and they're pretty much the entire expense of the system. Because everything else is just dirt, charcoal, it's just scrap wood. Um, you can also make the system out of anything that will hold this stuff. So like clay pots or something like they make here would work just as well. All it has to do is just hold the things, have a sort of a hole on the top and sort of a hole on the bottom. Um, for these lids, I just got my knife and just like punched like eight little slits in there and then kind of like twisted the knife just to make it a bit bigger. That works fine. Uh, and then for the buckets, oh, that's what um, I did similar. I just can't even really see, but like um, again, just like punched some like some little holes, twisted the knife, eight. That's fine in the center. And then the water drains out of here. This um. These lids are a perfect shape and they've got that little bowl there so the water just sort of goes in there and then drains into the next bucket. Um, and the only other thing was, no, it wasn't necessary in this, but on these two, um, I took a bit of this, this fabric, folded it over a couple of times and then glued it uh, with some super glue, but any glue would do, onto, over those holes so that the um, water doesn't wash out the um, the charcoal and the sand. The, the wooden frame is just basic woodworking. It can be in this configuration, or it can be just like a table with a hole in it that you stack them on. Like anything which basically keeps the buckets from falling over and keeps them high enough that you can put like a jerry can or a bucket underneath. So, and then just like um some kind of like thread or rope or string or like these like straps just to tie it on nice and tight so that if like, you know, a kid knocks into this or something, like it doesn't, doesn't fall off. And just sit that in the center. These are air holes. Um, because as the water moves down, it kind of displaces the air and the air needs to be able to escape. A couple of small holes in the side of the lid there or somewhere on the outside here, uh, like this one, just sort of keeps it so that the water can keep moving without doing weird things with the air pressure. And that's it. That's it, that's the entire process. Wow. You make the stuff, you put it in the buckets, you punch some holes, you make a frame, you get a water filter. Yep. So this is the United Nations water. This is the water they give you to drink, which is, I mean, if you're not getting sick, I guess it's fine, but it's also not very clean. I'm going to, uh, today, later today, I'm going to go and get some bore water, like from the, from the ground pump, yeah. and put that through and see what that looks like. And then take some samples and get them tested in Arua somewhere. All right. You know what? This water is much better than the one for DC Crystal. The recent one they brought in Nile. This water is totally different taste, but this is awesome. No good. test of my soil, no test of what, so it's better. Like the other water of the other, this Nile uh, water, the bottle water. Mm -mm. These things do get better over time. There's a biofilm which needs to grow on the sand and the charcoal needs to activate a little bit, which means the pores, like the nanopores, need to open up a bit. So this is just sort of first wash kind of just getting the thing primed kind of uh, kind of time. This one that I had going last night with this water, um, it seems to be doing j about eight liters per hour. Um, 
so which is okay. I'm gonna work on improving that, but that's already sort of like fast enough, I think. You only want to put about three of these jugs in here, otherwise you'll overfill the system. So three of these, blush, blush, blush. Come back an hour later and you'll have that, basically. Um, this is also completely scalable, like you can use larger buckets, you can use smaller buckets. The purpose of each of these things is to get progressively smaller. So the gravel takes out like the bits of stick and grass and like the large sort of clumps of stuff in the water. Um, and then the sand, the sand has sort of like two effects. It's a very small filter, um, so again like only things of a certain size can get through. Um, and then also it has a biofilm which grows on it, which is kind of like a sort of microbial kind of jelly, which then digests microbes like, um, like bacteria and viruses, like it'll actually eat them. And then the charcoal is basically like, even, even though like the grain of charcoal might be the size of like, you know, like a piece of rice, it's, it's microstructure. Like if you looked at that like on the atomic level, it's like, a, it's like it's got a, a massive surface area basically like the, the the holes in the surface of the grain are pretty much the perfect size so that water will just pass it by but everything else will get like stuck in the stuck in the holes um so all of your like your microbes your bacteria your viruses your little bits and pieces which are like small enough that they get through the sand won't get through the carbon it's just like and then it keeps them it keeps it there that takes out the, the large stuff, that takes out the medium stuff, that takes out the small stuff, and what comes out at the end should be just water. It will be necessary at some point to clean this filter out because the stuff that gets taken out of the water stays in the bucket. I'm thinking probably about once a year. If you just sort of take out the buckets one by one, empty them into a basin, give them a bit of a wash, <clears throat> throw out the water, and then chuck the stuff back in the bucket, and then it's good to go for another year, maybe six months, that sort of thing. Like, when you get like commercial uh, filters made in like factories and that sort of stuff, uh, given by an NGO, it's got to be basically the same technology, except uh, you know, in a nice plastic housing with a logo on the side. But this will be more effective because it's bigger and free.